back in studio number two, so the lighting will be slightly different, the sound will be slightly different, and I've moved the camera closer to the bench because it's adjustable now, so we can take a look at these. Uh, the, the, this is also the reason I'm in this particular room, because there's less combustible stuff about. It's a more controlled environment for blowing stuff up. So this is an electric match. It's used for lighting pyrotechnic devices. I've shown these before, but uh, I'm going to do an interesting experiment with them. The idea is that if you've got a, a fuse for the firework, you can slip it under this red cover, slide it up against the match that so locks it in place, and then when you apply current across this, it will trigger it. It will uh, cause that to explode in there and light the uh, match, which is usually a quick match, designed to actually ignite the firework almost immediately. And these things, uh, well, let me draw, draw the inside of one. If you were to take one of these devices apart, so I've taken the cover off this one, it looks like a little piece of circuit board material with copper on both sides. And that's the front of it with the wire tacked on and the sort of, it'll have a blob around the end. But if you looked at it from the side, you would see a little heater wire going over from one side to the other. And then you'd see a solder blob here for the wire going away. And then this would be dipped in an explosive compound and then dipped in a lacquer, uh, possibly nitrocellulose lacquer, to seal the water out and also just help with the ignition. And the idea is that when you fire these, they make a bit of a bang and they fire. So let's, uh, let's actually fire one right now. But before I do that, I'll draw one more thing. This is a device used to connect these together because these are connected in series. I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, and this is a common telecommunications device and inside it is a metal plate with a couple of slots in it. And to join a wire, you slip the wires into this like this. It's got two little ports and a little plastic plunger. This is a really standard telecommunication connector. And when you use the correct set of pliers, sort of blunt end pliers with a sort of spacer, and you squeeze that, it goes down to the click and it not only pierces the insulation of the wire and bites into the inner copper core, but it also squishes a sticky goo, a sort of a dielectric gel out, and that makes it completely waterproof. It is designed for te telecommunications. In the case of pyrotechnics, it gets used once, which seems a bit wasteful, but given the cost and scale of pyrotechnic displays, it makes complete sense. So let's uh, blow this up now. And to show you how the current affects the operation of this, I'm going to put a meter in series so we can actually watch the uh, current going up. Now, these are designed to trigger at round about 500 milliamps. So let's do that. And I want to point out at this point in time, there is going to be a loud bang. This is going to blow up and it's going to leave a sooty skid mark. So there's going to be even more noise because I've got a bench power supply here that has a fan in it. So uh, let's uh, select current. Let's turn the meter on. And we shall select current mode. I'm going to start turning it up. So 20 milliamps, 30 milliamps. Let's go all the way up to 120. You seeing this okay? 180. And keep in mind, this should fire around about the 500 milliamp uh, mark. So it takes quite a bit. So that's uh, 350, 400, 470, 480, 490, 500. and it has ignited at 570 milliamps. That's pretty good. So uh, when you want to fire multiples of these, you wire them in series. And it might seem odd, why would you wire it in series? Let's turn that fan back off again. Because you'd think uh, if you're gonna apply a voltage across it, you would just uh, basically have them all in parallel. But in reality, if you did, the resistance of these is extremely low. It's, it's only about one ohm each. So that would very quickly mean that if you had a long run of cable, you'd have to pass a really high current. The losses in the cable would be enormous. So what they actually do is they wire them in series. And then you think, but doesn't that mean the first one that blows actually breaks the circuit? Well, not necessarily because initially, let me uh, get the meter here and we'll do a continuity test and see if this one has remained intact. Let's uh, stick the meter on to continuity. Let's 
stick it on there and the thing, although it's detonated, it's still showing continuity through. And the only way I'm going to actually stop it being continuity is uh, to break the little uh, wire at the end. So initially, I mean, theoretically, if they were uh, firing quite significant explosive devices, then it could blow it completely to bits. But initially, um, after it's fired, the wire won't necessarily break. It just heats up like a resistance element. So I'm just going to set this up now. I'm going to actually wire three of them in series to show you that. So now I've got the three in series and I'm going to try, I don't know if this is going to work, I'm going to try and fire them with a 9 volt battery. It should work because it's a fresh battery, but it depends if it can put out the required current. So three, two, one, and all three of them fired. Excellent. Now I'm going to set it up with another three in series, but we're going to increase the current slowly and see what happens. In this scenario, I've got the three in series and I'm going to increase the current slowly to emulate a misfire where it's potentially possible that one of the devices fires and does blow itself clear before the others have fired. So more noise in the power supply here. Fan running, power supply, selecting volt, selecting current, decimal place, and let's start running it up. So let's run it up to 200 and 300 milliamps. So the middle one is fired. That could potentially have broken the circuit to the others, but the current is still flowing. I'm going to reselect current and start increasing it further. 560 milliamps. 600 milliamps. Seven hundred milliamps. The two of them uh, that have failed already are still passing current. Seven hundred and sixty, and it blew at seven hundred and eighty milliamps, and the current dropped down, so it actually blew clear. That's interesting. So what actually happened there was uh, if this one had actually fired first, it appears to have broken the circuit. I think that's broken the circuit. Hold on, let's uh, test them. Let's set this meter back to continuity. Get the leads disconnected and uh, probe which of these ones actually went completely open circuit. So I'm just doing a continuity test. Yeah, that one has uh, failed completely open circuit. Did the others? Uh, that's still con continuity and that's still continuity. So uh, this one did actually fail and blow open circuit. So that kind of shows that if you have high resistance joints and your current uh, in the firing circuit doesn't go up high enough, fast enough, then uh, you potentially you're going to have some fireworks fire and blow the circuit open and then it's going to stop the other ones from firing. And the most likely scenario for that is bad connections or a firing system where they're using low voltage to fire and it's affected much more notably, by the long runs of very thin wire they tend to use, and also, you know, any sort of bad connection, either twisted wires, or in the case of uh, pyropod systems, sometimes the plug-in pyropod uh, assemblies with multiple pods, sometimes they suffer contact corrosion in the adjacent pods if only one's been used, because pyrotechnic compounds, by their very nature, are a highly oxidising material, and in the vicinity of other metals, they will actually corrode them very quickly with the residue from, during particularly the flash that's come out from the explosion. So that was uh, interesting. It does show that that is a likely scenario that if you've got a high resistance firing circuit, uh, that it's gonna cause that problem. And most uh, testers do, most pyro systems do have a, either at the very least a button to press that lights an LED to show that the circuit is complete, but some of them are better. They actually show the resistance. The uh, the dynamite blaster showed with a, did it have a handle? Yes, it did have a handle. Uh, it recently, it did actually let you test the resistance of the circuit before actually uh, choosing to fire it. Very interesting. Uh, anything else worth mentioning here. I can't have, I've, I actually thought something and I've just completely forgotten what it was. Um, yes. Um, one moment. 
One of the biggest concerns about Pyro is they say you shouldn't use a mobile phone in the vicinity of it. And they're kind of working the basis that you could induce current in these. But keep in mind that if you've got a wire running out to the charge, which has a very low resistance, it's about 0.51 ohm, then to actually induce over 500 milliamps, half an amp in that cable for long enough to heat that wire up and fire it would suggest that, you know, that was a really high power transmitting device, particularly, yeah, it's a kind of an unlikely scenario. Other scenarios, you think that uh, possibly electrostatic charge could build up between them, but keep in mind, they're shorted at this end by the pyro device itself with a very low resistance, so you're not going to get the build up of charge so that when you shorted those ends together, it could fire it. Um, other possibilities that are do pose a hazard are static discharge. There have been instances where someone's gone up and touched something and it's discharged static, possibly in the actual device itself, and a spark has jumped and just a complete random thing, it's caused a misfire. Um, and I can think of one situation, it was a fairly high... Uh, lift charge for a sort of creamer cannon and the guy was he did have his hand quite badly burnt and that was just literally by touching it but um that's a uh, one of the few instances i can think of that uh, an issue like that has occurred some of the other ones you wonder were they just making excuses for an actual you know someone mis mispowering it accidentally when uh, you have the test systems that you push the test button Typically, the current going through them to light the LED is 10 milliamps. It's so low that it's never going to actually fire that. It makes the circuit very simple. Uh, it's literally, at the, you can have the test button. Oh, test button. Uh, draw a really bad test button. And a resistor and an LED. And then going through the actual pyro circuit to the battery. And when you push the button, the resistor limits the current and the LED will light to show that the circuit's complete. But it doesn't tell you that it's low resistance. Uh, it's not as good as the sort of digital test. But interesting and certainly well worth doing that experiment. And I got to blow something up at my new bench too.